company uses waterproof paper to make disposable conical drinking cups. To make each cup, a sector AOB is cut from a circular piece of paper of radius 9 cm. The edges AO and OB are then joined to form the cup as shown. The radius of the rim of the cup is R and the height of the cup is H. By expressing R squared in terms of H, show that the capacity of the cup in centimeters cubed is given by the formula V equals pi over 3H into 81 minus H squared. Capacity is just another word for volume. Notice that the slant height of the cone, that is the distance from say this point here on the rim of the cone to the apex is equal to the radius of the circle, the circular sector that the cone is made out of. That radius is 9. The distance from O to A is actually what's called the slant height of the cone, or the distance from O to B. Now Pythagoras' theorem links the radius of the cone, the vertical height of the cone, which we call small h, and the slant height, which is 9, together. To get the volume of a cone, we use the formula 1 third pi r squared h. What we will do is write r in terms of h using Pythagoras. So the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides of this right angle triangle equals the square of the hypotenuse. 9 squared is 81. So that means that r squared is 81 minus h squared. So we're going to get the volume of the cone in terms of h. So for r squared, we're going to write 81 minus h squared. And that's exactly what we need to get. Okay, it's in a different order. It's the same thing. There are two possible values of h for which the capacity of the cup is 154 pi all divided by 3. One of these values is an integer. Find the two values. Give the non-integer value correct to two decimal places. Okay, so we want to put v equal to 154 pi over 3. We want to solve this equation. We are given that one value of h is an int one value of h is an integer. Um, let's just do some cancelling first. Divide both sides by pi. Multiply both sides by three. So we have 81 minus h squared multiplied by h equals 154. Now this is actually a cubic equation. Okay, so if we multiply h in here, we get 81 h minus h cubed equals 154. It's not a quadratic equation, so we can't just use the formula for a quadratic. Um, we don't have a formula for a cubic equation. It's not on the course. So we need to maybe just do some experimenting to find out what h could be. The fact is we are given that one value of h is an integer, so that should help us. So that narrows down the options. So it won't, shouldn't take us too long to find h. If h was any old value, it could take a lot of trial and error. Well, could take forever because h could be um, a decimal with, with many places. But since h is an integer, we can just run through integers until we find a solution to this thing. Well, the smallest positive integer, it has to be positive, h can't be negative. The smallest positive integer is 1, of course. Well, it's, well, well actually it's 0, but we could say it's zero, but zero doesn't give us any anything, of course. If we put one in here, we get 81 times one minus one. That gives us 80. So h equals one is obviously not right, correct. It looks like h equals two should be the integer solution. 81 times two is 162. And if we subtract two cubed, well, two cubed is eight, we get 154. So h equals two is the int integer solution. Now, how do we find the other solution of this cubic equation? We are told that there is a second solution. It's a non-integer value, so we're not going to be trying to guess what that is. Um, 
what we do is use a thing called the factor theorem. If 2 is a solution of this equation, then h minus 2 is a factor. But the equation must can't be in this form. We have to change the form so that 0 is on one side. So h equals 2 is a root or solution of the equation. Now what I will do is I'll bring everything to one side and I'll change signs here to make the cube term positive. It means I must change the sign of this here. And I will bring over the 154 and change its sign. So bring it over, it's minus, change its sign, it's plus. And then we have 0 on the right hand side. So I'm writing this cubic equation with 0 on the right hand side. Only then can I apply what's called the factor theorem, which is covered in other videos. If 2 is a root of a polynomial, this is called a polynomial equation. Um, it's made up of integer powers of the variable. The highest power here is 3, and subsequent terms have decreasing powers. So, like, you know, we have a 0 h squared term. is isn't shown here, but you could think of it as being there. Then we have a h term. And then we have cons a constant term. This is called a cubic polynomial. h equals 2 is a root. By the factor theorem, h minus 2 is a factor of this cubic expression. So now we found a factor of this. So if we have one factor of it, we can find the other factors by dividing h minus 2 into this. That will give us other factors of this cubic equation. And from those other factors, we can find other solutions. So now we go through the division, long division process. We should write in all the powers of h. There is no h squared term in this, so just write in 0 h squared. It makes the division easier. It's easier to keep track of terms in the division. So the first step is to divide h and h cubed, so it goes h squared times. The second step is to multiply h squared by this, get back to h cubed. h squared by minus 2 is minus 2 h squared. The next step is to subtract. So it's like changing the signs here, h cubed minus h cubed is 0. We have 0 h squared plus 2 h squared, that's just plus 2 h squared. The next step is to take down this term, it's minus 81 h. And after that, we go back to dividing. This time, we divide h into 2h squared to give plus 2h. Then we multiply plus 2h by this, get back to 2h squared, plus 2h by minus 2 is minus 4h. Subtract again. These give you 0, 80, minus 81, plus 4. This is actually minus 81h minus minus 4. So we get minus 81h plus 4h is um, minus... 77h. After subtracting, the next step is to take down the next term, which is plus 154. Now we divide h into minus 77h to get minus 77. Minus 77 by h gives back to minus 77h. Minus 77 by minus 2 is plus 154. Next step is to subtract. This minus this give a 0, this minus this gives a 0. We get a 0 remainder, as expected. Be um, because by the factor theorem, h minus 2 is meant to be a factor of this cubic. So if it's a factor, it means that the remainder is 0. So you should always get a 0 here. That's a sign that everything is worked out. So what does all this mean? It means that we can write this cubic expression, which is what's inside the division sign as h minus 2 multiplied by h squared plus 2h minus 77. So when we're solving this cubic equation here, it's equivalent to solving this one here. But we have factors of it now. The product of the factors is 0. So we know that the only way that can happen is if either factor is equal to 0. So that means that either h minus 2 is 0, which leads us to h equals 2, which we already have. We already have this root. Or the other factor is 0. Now, by putting the other factor equal to 0, we get a quadratic equation. And we can solve this for uh, new solutions, h. 
if it has solutions well we are given that there is another solution so this equ quadratic equation should have at least one solution now I'm I've written this quadratic equation up here and we go through the sol get, getting the solutions of it when we're getting the square root here you should write it down to several decimal places because we want our final um, solution to be given to two decimal places so we'll do the rounding to two decimal places at the end so maybe you should write down this part here to four or more decimal places so you get a fairly accurate answer at the very end if I take the positive value here you will get to two decimal places 7.83 so that is the other solution h must be positive we don't take the negative value here because then h will come out to be negative which makes no sense in this question h has to be positive so here is the second solution it's a non-integer value as is stated in the question find the maximum possible volume of the cup correct to the nearest centimeter cubed so v is pi over 3 h into 81 minus h squared I will multiply h in here so we get 81 h minus h cubed so we want the value of h that maximizes v and when we found that value of h we plug it into here to find the maximum volume v that the cup can have so this is a differentiation problem so to find the value of h that maximizes v we set dv dh equal to zero and solve so I, i've explained this why this works in several other videos um, by referring to the graph of v and finding the local maximum of this function the local maximum occurs where the tangent is horizontal that means the slope of the tangent which is the derivative of dv dh is zero so I won't draw a graph here I, I've explained it before I'm just going to go ahead and get the derivative so that's why I multiply the h in here we could use the product rule on this but why bother it's easier just to multiply h in and uh, just do differentiate each term so let's get dv dh well the pi over 3 is just a constant multiple it just sits in front so we just leave that to one side and then we differentiate 81 h with respect to h that's just 81 differentiating minus h cubed gives minus 3 h squared put this equal to zero and we solve this equation to get the value of h which maximizes the volume v so with this product giving us zero so we can forget about pi over 3 or if you like you could think of dividing across by pi over 3 to get 81 minus 3 h squared equals zero or if you like the product of two factors is zero so either of them can be zero well this can't be zero so the other this one here must be zero solving this here we get h well h squared is 81 divided by 3 81 divided by 3 is 27 so h must be the square root of 27 so we bring over the 81 divided by 3 uh, we get 27 so now i will get the maximum volume plug this value h in here to find v we could call it v max just to emphasize that we're getting the maximum volume by the way we could also be getting the minimum volume because to get a minimum local minimum dvdh is also zero now i will explain shortly that since that um what we actually have here is the value of h that gives us a maximum i'll just go ahead and work it out first we have pi over 3 into 81 times root 27 minus root 27 cubed working out all of this I get 293.835 etc so we want to round this to the nearest centimeter cubed that means we want to round this to the nearest integer so we look to the first place it's if it's five or more we round up so we round this up to 294 
as an aside, let's look at a rough sketch of the graph of V against H. We know that when H is naught, V is naught. That makes sense. If the height of the cone is zero, well, we just have a flat disk. We, we have zero volume. So if we plug naught in for H, we get zero. So the graph cuts the H axis at naught. When H is nine, we also have zero because the slant height is fixed. The slant height is always nine. That's, that's a given from the way the cone is constructed. H and R can vary. But if H is equal to the slant height, then we have just a line. The cone becomes a, a straight line. R will go to zero. If R goes to zero, the slant height and the vertical height coincide. So the volume of the cone is just the volume of a straight line, which is zero. Now, for values of H between zero and nine, well, V is going to be positive. So the curve is above the H axis. And at root 27, we have a maximum. And H equals root 27. By the way, root 27 is not midway between 0 and 9. Root 27 is 5.2. Um, it's, it's close to midpoint, so this is not exactly symmetric, but we must have a maximum. So this value must give us a local maximum. Couldn't give us a local min. If it was to give us a local min, then the curve V would be negative for values of H between 0 and 9, and that won't make any sense. So that, that's how we know that we have a maximum. But that's just an aside. You just take, you know, in a problem like this, we only get one value of H that makes sense. The, the positive square root of 27. We ignore the negative square root because H has to be positive. So there's only one solution to it. So that means that it must give us just one turning point. And since we're talking about maximum, it must give us the maximum. In the next part, we have to complete this table. We want to consider the cups in part B. There are two possible values of R for the cup, cups in part B that give a volume of 154 pi over 3, which is approximately 161 centimeters cubed. So we want to just note down those two values. Actually, sorry, those two values are h, not r. And we want to find the values of r that correspond to these two values. Well, r and h are connected through Pythagoras' theorem up here. r is root 81 minus h squared. So when h is 2, r is going to be root 81 minus 2 squared, which is 4. That's root 77. To two decimal places, the square root of 77 is 8.77. Similarly, we can find the radius corresponding to the cone of height 7.83. We just calculate r equals the square root of 81 minus... 7.83 squared and if we do that we get 4.43 for part c we got the maximum volume to be 294 centimeters cubed and if you remember that was the square root of 27 uh, sorry the, the height was the square root of 27 that's to one uh, to two decimal places that's 5.20 we calculate r by getting the square root of 81 minus h squared, where h is 5.2. That gives us 7.35 centimeters. In practice, which one of the three cups above is the most reasonable shape for a conical cup? Give a reason for your answer. Well, which one of them below, actually? The table is below this question. Um, turns out that this one is the most reasonable. Um, if we look at this first cup here, its height is only two centimeters. That's for a cup to drink from. Two centimeters is, is a very uh, small cup, two centimeters in height. And if we look at the radius, 8.77, that means the diameter is twice this. The, the diameter is 17 centimeters roughly across. That doesn't. That's way too big for the opening of the cup. Um, 
So this is the most reasonable. Um, this one here is, is, is not the best. It's still not that high. It's five, only 5.2 centimeters high. And uh, the opening is far too wide. The opening is is going to be twice in diameter is going to be um, nearly 15 centimeters. That's too big an opening for a cup. So the answer is that this is the best. The diameter of the opening is about nine centimeters, and the height is fairly reasonable. For the cup you have chosen in part E, that's this cup here, find the measure of the angle AOB that must be cut from the circular disc in order to make the cup. Give your answer in degrees correct to the nearest degree. Alright, so this um, shader part here will be used to make the cup. So this part will be folded together so that OA coincides with OB. And the distance from A to B will be the circumference of the opening of the cup. Let's call the distance from A all the way along the major arc to B to B. Let's call it distance C. It's not the distance all around a full circle. It's only just for this sector, the shaded sector. The length of the arc of the shaded sector. Let's call the angle subtended by that arc theta. We know that to calculate C, we consider the circumference of a full circle, which is 2 pi r. 2 times pi times r. Well, r is 9 in this case. So, this here is the distance all the way around the circle. It's the perimeter length or circumference of the full circle. But we're only interested in the distance from A all the way around to B. So, this fraction of full circumference well, the fraction is got by getting putting this angle here, theta, over 360 degrees and multiplying by 2 pi r. So this is just a formula 2 pi r for the circumference of a circle. So don't confuse C. I should have chosen a different letter here. I should really call it B, D maybe. Just change it to D just to avoid confusion with the circumference. So... Um, Simplifying, we get pi theta over 20. I've just written theta here. This distance d from a to b will form the circumference of the opening of the cup. So I've drawn it here. d is pi theta over 20. So that's the circumference of the opening. But the cup that we want to make has a radius of 4.43 centimeters. So now we can find theta, because if we know the radius of this circular opening, we can get the circumference. Circumference, which I'll call C, is 2 pi r, 2 pi times the radius, and the radius is 4.43. And this must equal pi theta over 20. So now you see we can solve to find angle theta. We can Divide both sides by pi and multiply both sides by 20. So we get um, theta equals 20 times 2 times 4.43. To the nearest degree, this is 177 degrees. So this angle here is 177 degrees. Actually, this shape is um, not accurate. If theta is 177, it's less than 180 degrees. So this depiction here is not accurate. Um, it would look more like the following. This angle is less than 180. 